I'm Stuart Thompson, editor of Digital TV Europe. I'm here with Peter Basson, who is uh, lead TV content hub at Deutsche Telekom for Europe outside of Germany. Um, Peter, uh, telco TV versus traditional pay TV, what really is the difference? Well, um, we are a telco, so that means that we are operating in several different other businesses. So we're operating in fixed and mobile and B2B and in addition on TV. And that means for us that um, all the budgets are allocated in different fields. And when push comes to show, and when it's really hard, then, then TV is the one who is actually suffering first on budget. So we are dealing with very limited budgets, and that means that we are currently always reassessing our content strategy with regards to linear channels. Do we really need the 25th Bible channel? Or um, is the balance between local TV, local channels, and international pay channels right? The second is sports rights. Do we really need all the exclusive sports rights we are having in the footprint? And the third is the balance between D2C and your own investment into content and all production. We've talked about the, the rise of uh, direct to consumer. Is streaming a, a threat to Deutsche Telekom or, or an opportunity? Well, actually, it's both ways. It's more an opportunity than a threat. For me, Disney Plus, when it comes to our territories, or um, Netflix, is actually another great channel with great content, which we want to integrate into our propositions. Um, if we do that rightly with uh, great metadata and great user interface and unified search, unified recommendation, then this is really something which is improving our property. Um, Amazon is a bit different when it comes to Amazon Full Prime because that is a full new ecosystem. And uh, you have that in the UK and Germany, so they're also integrating already channels, and that is becoming more competition then. And how that develops, I don't know. Not an offer print yet, but in the end, this can become the 800 pound gorilla in the front yard and uh, more dangerous than Netflix or Disney Plus. Right. I mean, so there's a variety of yeah. possibilities there partnership, or in the case of Amazon, possibly a, a competitor. I mean, within that context, do you see sort of partnerships as the model going forward, or is there a need to differentiate what, what you do from the streaming providers? I think it's both. Um, when it comes to entertainment, differentiation is not really our topic because we are operating in 10 markets, very fragmented, different languages, different cultures, different histor historical backgrounds. So we, we won't do any production centrally for all the territories. This is very hard to leverage. So in entertainment, I think it's rather partnering what we're doing. We are best aggregator. We're aggregating all the content yeah, in order to um, give our customers the best user experience. When it comes to sports, it's a bit different because we are having sports rights in a lot of territories, which are exclusive. And there is no zone so far in these territories. Yeah? So OTT sports uh, or, or pure OTT sports is not yet available there. Um, whether we need all the exclusivities in the future or whether we find ways of partnering or sharing, of course, depending on all the regulatory and antitrust issues we might face then, that is open currently. But, um, but aggregation is more our topic. Right. How generally do you think that the telco business will be impacted by DTC launches? Will the model change? I think we, it's a win-win, actually. For us, it's good because we get, we get great content. We cannot do our own. Yeah, but on the other hand, I think Netflix has so far, I think 300 million potential customers via telco partnerships. So we are also an acquisition tool for them. So um, I think we will be used more and more as an acquisition tool by D2C, which is good for us because we can then actually give our customers in attractive bundles very good product. Yeah. Now we're here at Video Exchange Streaming. Why do you think events like this are important? What do you hope to get out of it? Well, for me, as a pure content guy, actually, it's very interesting to have events where you uh, look outside the box of content a bit. So you have a lot of other topics here as well. Uh, touching content, but uh, are more at the intersection of other topics as well. And that's really important for me to meet those people and, and uh, get more insights. And what have you enjoyed so far about this year's event? Well, we are early in the conference right now, but I'm looking very much forward to um, the outbreak session in the afternoon on the intersection of user experience and content. Peter, thanks very much. Thanks for having me. Thank you. Thank you.